Innalhamdulillah Alhamdulillah wa kafa Hamdan kathiran tayyiban mubarakan fih Nahmaduhu wa nasta'inahu wa nastaghfiru wa nastahdih Wa na'udhu billahi min syururi anfusina wa min sayyiati a'malina Man yahdihillahu falamudillala Wa man yudlil falan tajidalahu waliyan murshida Wa ashadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lahu lahu almulk Wa lahu alhamd yuhyi wa yumit Wa huwa hayyun la yamut biyadihi alkhair Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in shaheed Fa'alu lima yurid Wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh Sayyidina wa habibana wa shafi'ana al-mustafa Salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi بعد عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وأحسن الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم وشر أمور أمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار ونعوذ بالله من ذلك. Just a few weeks ago, all across the United States, a holiday was celebrated in this country called New Year's. And during this particular celebration, what American people typically do is they look back over the last year of their life to assess their successes and failures. And then they resolve over the next year to set higher goals for themselves so that when the new year comes around again, they can look back over it and see that they've improved from the previous year. Now, we don't have a New Year's holiday in Islam where we set resolutions for the next year, but it is part of our religion to assess the past, make tawbah, and move on into the future closer to the sirat al-mustaqim than we were before. This is fundamental to our deen. The best way for us to do that is to remember the advice of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the greatest advice he ever gave this ummah was in his final khutbah to all of us. A khutbah that he asked to be passed down generation after generation. So today, inshallah, we will review this khutbah and take some select points out of it and see how it can help the ummah of the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu salam today. During the one and only hajj pilgrimage of the Prophet alayhi salatu salam, on the day of Arafat, he ascended the people, over 10,000 of them, and he began by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and telling the Muslim community to have taqwa. Then he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O people, just as you regard this month of Dhul Hijjah, this city of Mecca, and this day of Arafat as sacred, so regard the property, the honor, and the blood of every single Muslim is sacred as well. Return the goods that are entrusted to you. Make sure they reach their rightful owners. Hurt no one so that you will not be harmed. Remember that you will indeed stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he will reckon your deeds. Allah has forbidden riba, lending and borrowing money on interest. So from this day forward, all obligations of riba are canceled, and I begin with my own family, he said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beware of the shaitan, for he has given up on the idea that you will worship him here in this land. But he's pleased to see you led astray with all of the sins that are lesser than this that lead to the hellfire. O oh people, it is true that you have certain rights over women, but women also have rights over you. If they abide in your rights, then it is their right to be, uh, to be fed and clothed in kindness. Remember that you have taken them as a sacred trust from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is not their right to befriend anyone whom you are not pleased to see them friends with. O oh people, listen to me earnestly. 
Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Pray your five daily salawat. Fast Ramadan. Give zakah and make the hajj pilgrimage if you are able to do so. All mankind is from Adam and Hawa. And Adam is from the dust of the earth. No Arab person has any superiority over a non-Arab person. And no non-Arab person has any superiority over an Arab person. No white-skinned person has any superiority over a black-skinned person. And no black-skinned person has any superiority over a white-skinned person except in their own personal piety, taqwa, their consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal. Know that every single Muslim is part of a brotherhood and a sisterhood. Nothing shall be legitimate to a fellow Muslim that belongs to another Muslim unless it is given freely and willingly. Remember, one day you will appear before Allah and answer for your deeds. So beware and do not stray from the path of righteousness after I'm gone, returning to the time of Jahiliyyah when you used to kill each other. O oh people, no new prophet is coming after me. No new dispensation of Islam will be born. Reason well, therefore, and understand the words that I convey to you. I leave behind two things. If you hold fast to them, you will never go astray. The book of Allah and my prophetic sunnah, my example for you. All those who are listening to me today, please pass on these words to those who are not here and may that final group who hears it understand better than the ones who heard today. After he said this, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah revealed the beautiful ayat from Surah Al-Ma'idah, this day I have perfected your religion for you and completed my grace upon you and have chosen Islam for you as a religion. Now let's look at a few select points from this khutbah and see how they can help us today. Ya ayyuhan nas, inna dima'akum wa amwalakum haramun alaykum ila an talqaw rabbakum ka hurmati yawmikum hadha fi shahrikum hadha fi baladikum hadha. Who of us could even imagine that a person would travel all the way to Mecca, walk up to the Kaaba and mock it, None of us can even imagine that a person would make the Hajj pilgrimage only to stand on the day of Arafat and take it as a joke. But it's not hard for you and me to imagine mocking and taking other Muslims as a joke, is it? Slandering and backbiting other Muslims, is it? Physically assaulting and billah, even killing other Muslims, is it? And yet the Prophet ﷺ is comparing these two things to each other. Your Muslim brother and sister, the Kaaba, the day of Arafat, and the month of Dhul Hijjah, and he's saying they're the same. If you can't even imagine disrespecting the Kaaba, how dare you disrespect another Muslim? Ya ayyuhan nas, inna shaytana qada ya'isa an yu'bada fi ardikum hadhi. وَلَكِنَّهُ قَدَ رَضِيَ أَنْ يُطَاعَ فِي مَا سِوَى ذَلِكَ مِمَّا تَحْقِرُونَ مِنْ أَعْمَالِكُمْ The shaytan is not coming at our ummah with a direct attack. He doesn't care if me and you set up an idol of him and worship it. That's irrelevant to him. Because he's happy to see you borrowing money on interest to buy your house and your car and your business and get educated. He's happy to see you lying and cheating and stealing and embezzling. He's happy to see you missing your salawat, not fasting Ramadan, withholding your zakat. He's happy to see you looking at pornography and committing zina. He's happy to see you doing those things because without Toba, those things will lead to the hellfire just like worshiping him. So we have to look at the plan of the shaitan. He has to expose himself. He doesn't care if you make shirk or not. He wants you to do everything else. Ayyuhan nas, innama al-mu'minuna ikhwa. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, quoting directly from the Quran. We're a brotherhood and we're a sisterhood of people. But we really have to ask ourselves a question. Do we see that today? Or do we see this? 
We see a Sunni and a Shi'i and a Salafi and a Sufi and a Diobandi and a Bralvi and a Alawi and a Shaifani. We've got so many sects. Every group thinks that he or she is right and everybody else is wrong. And we have to argue until the day of judgment about every single issue, as one of my teachers said, fighting over peanuts. And while we fight each other, what happens to us? Go to Myanmar today and see Muslims being killed and raped openly. Go to Palestine today. Watch your brothers and sisters shot and killed openly. And while we fight each other, this is what happens. We can't even get together and solve some of the most basic injustices happening on the earth today. And then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he tells you what's going to happen if you divide up into groups. Don't go back to being kuffar after I've spent this last part of my life guiding you. And then he gives you the main attribute of kuffar. What is the one thing about them that's so unique? Yadribu ba'dukum riqaba ba'd. They kill each other like idiots. And so go to Yemen today and watch Muslims kill each other. Go to Syria today and watch Muslims kill each other. Go to Libya today and watch Muslims kill each other. Go to Somalia today and watch Muslims kill each other. Praying towards the same Qibla, making the same Hajj pilgrimage, and then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, where's my weapon? I've got Muslims to go fight. This is insanity. Insanity. And then the Prophet وسلم, he gives you the solution to this problem. The solution which is so simple to understand. He says, You will not do these things if you just check out two sources of information. What are those two sources of information? Kitab Allah wa sunnat al nabi Nowhere in the Quran, I've read it cover to cover multiple times. I've never found a verse in here that tells me to break up into groups. Never found a verse in here, that, an ayah in here that tells me to go fight Muslims. It doesn't exist. It says, wala tafarraqu, don't break up into groups. And I've never seen in the entire seerah of our Prophet وسلم, where companions are fighting each other. Muslims are in a battle with each other. Didn't happen. Even when the munafiqun tried their best to get us to fight, it didn't work. And then the Prophet وسلم, gives the medicine to that disease, the arrogance where you think you're right and everyone's wrong. Ayyuhan nas. Inna rabbakum wahid. Hold on a second. That group and the other group and that group, there's only one God. They're all worshiping the same one God, Allah Azza wa Jal. Wa inna abakum wahid. Wait a second. Even though he's Pakistani and he's Arab and he's Bosnian and that one's Somali and this one's from, you know, an island off the coast of Australia, we all came from the same people. The same DNA is running through every single person's veins in here. And that ancestor of ours, yeah, he was dirt. And dirt is where you and I are headed. So why are you arrogant? Why do you think you're better than anyone? Why do you think anything of yourself other than the reality of the grave? أكرمكم عند الله أتقاكم إن الله عليم خبير وليس لعربي على عجم فضل إلا بالتقوى. That the best of you in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa taala is the one who actually is striving to be conscious of Allah all the time, and no one can say that about someone else. Only Allah knows that about you. And then he's speaking to a group of Arab people and tells them to their faces, you're not better than anyone else and no one else is better than you. That took a lot of guts 1,441 years ago to say. 
But he wanted to be clear. No special status in Islam because of your skin color, the language you speak, the land you came from, your favorite flag, how much Quran your grandfather used to read. Irrelevant. Me and you have a status with Allah based on how conscious we are of him. Allah al badaght he said, have I not conveyed this message? Allahumma ashhad. Oh Allah, I bear witness that I have. Qalu na'am, the people said. Of course you have. فَلِيُبَلِّغِ الشَّاهِدِ الْقَائِبِ then please tell people who weren't here this message. Make sure it gets to the later generations. The perfection of Islam is found, brothers and sisters in Islam, when this religion comes outside of you and gets to the people who haven't yet heard it yet. أبدأ بسم الله الرحمن وبالرحيم دائم الإحسان فالحمد لله القديم الأول الآخر الباقي بلا تحول ثم الصلاة والسلام صرمدا على النبي خير من قد وحدا وآله وصحبه ومن تبع سبيل دين الحق غير مبتدع يا أيها المسلمون سيكم نفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل. Now what happened next is nothing short of a miracle. Those people that were there that day, in fact, did exactly what the Prophet ﷺ said. And in less than 250 years, no matter if you were in Spain, or you were in North Africa, or you were in Southern Europe, or you were in Southeast Asia, that beautiful message of Islam reached you. Because, Take it out to the people who weren't here, he said. The people heard and they obeyed. And what do we have today? Almost 2 billion Muslim people today, mashallah, tabarakallah. Look around this room at the plethora of colors and faces and languages, and you see what happens when we listen to the advice of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the companions also understood that there were consequences if you don't do it. النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال مثل القائم على حدود الله والواقع فيها كمثل قوم استهموا على سفينة فأصاب بعضهم أعلاها وبعضهم أسفلها فكان الذين في أسفلها إذا استقوا من الماء مروا على من فوقهم فقالوا لو أننا خرقنا في نصيبنا خرقة ولن نؤذي من فوقنا وَإِنْ يَتْرُكُوهُمْ وَمَا عَرَادُوا هَلَكُوا جَمِيعًا وَإِنْ أَخَذُوا عَلَىٰ عَيْدِيهِمْ نَجَوْ وَنَجَوْ جَمِيعًا The Prophet ﷺ gave the example of a boat one day with two levels. He said the people on the top of the boat have water. Now metaphorically speaking, the Qur'an is often referred to as water. Allah sends the water to the dead land and brings it back to life. And he said, the people on the bottom level don't have any water. So the people on the bottom, they come up with an idea. They say, you know, if we just put a hole in the boat, you know, it's a boat, it's floating on water. The water just comes in. We don't have to go up top anymore by these people. And then the prophet warns us, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, if they let them do this, halaku jamia, everybody is destroyed. But if they stop them, they're saved and everybody is saved. I have a rhetorical question for you, Charleston Muslim community. Meaning I don't want you to answer, I want you to think. If we use this metaphor to apply to the world today, and we say the Muslims are the people with revelation, and the non-Muslims are the people without revelation, or we're the people with water and they're the people without water. Is our boat floating or is it sinking? Let me tell you some things I know about the Muslim community because I've visited almost 200 of them. Last year I spent some time in Arizona. A young man stayed with me that day. 
He said he memorized the Quran when he was 11 years old, and he continued to lead Salatul Taraweeh from that period until he was 21 for 10 years straight. I said, MashaAllah, who doesn't wish they were you? Man, I'm jealous in a good way. He said, but Imam Isa, really, I have to be honest with you. When I turned 16, halfway through that period, I became an atheist. Do you know what that means? That means for five years, brothers and sisters in Islam, he's leading us in Salat al and he doesn't even believe that God exists. I just talked to one of my teachers, Sheikh Omar Baloch. He said in his Islamic school, the Adam students are all smoking weed. According to modern polls done of the American Muslim community, over 51% of us, when asked, do you approve or disapprove of homosexual marriage, 51% of us said, no problem. What book are they reading? Is it the Quran that not once, not twice, not five times, not eight times, but ten times Allah repeats the same story about these people who engage in homosexuality and Allah wipes them off the face of the earth? We can't be reading the same book. Because that story is a clear sign that that's not acceptable. And I can say more, but I think you get the point, brothers and sisters in Islam. When we don't give da'wah to these people, wallahi, they're going to give da'wah to us. And if our people are accepting the invitation, even the best of us, then that should be a serious wake-up call to you and me. We got to get up and do something about it. Because the boat is sinking. So what's the good news? What happens when you do your job? Last year, I also spent some time in Atlanta, and a very, very wonderful young man approached me after the khutbah. He introduced himself to me as Yusuf. Yusuf told me that he grew up in a non-Muslim home, and he said, I was taught to hate Muslims. So I hated you. And I hated you so much that I got in my loud, obnoxious pickup truck one day, and I drove to the masjid in my town, and I started revving up the engine and making all kinds of noise. I wanted to intimidate you. He said, but something happened that I didn't expect. Not the security guard or the police officer, but the masjid director came outside and confronted me. He said, what are you doing here? So I was a young teenage coward. I just froze. So the director said, you know what? I know why you came here today. You see, you don't know who we are, and you don't know why we're here, and we haven't done our job to tell you. So I'm going to give you something. If you take it and read it, you'll understand exactly who we are. So he went inside the masjid, and he came out, and he handed the boy the English translation of the Quran. He said, this is my gift to you. You take it. He said, I took the book. I put it inside my truck. I quickly left. The first thought that came to my mind is I'm throwing this book out the door. But as soon as I wanted to do that, subhanAllah, I saw a police car behind me. So I said, you know what, I'm not getting a ticket for littering today. So the book stayed in my truck. So after some time passed, I opened it up just to read what it said. Do you know what Yusuf told me? I think you know what happened next, right? His name is Yusuf. He said, the only thing I could think to do as I read the Quran was just to cry. He said, because I had been lied to about this book. And not only had I been lied to, but everything I was looking for was there. Would you like to know why he cried? And Abi Musa and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam qal, Method al bayt al ladhi yudhkarullahu fi, wal bayt al ladhi la yudhkarullahu fi. مثل الحي والميت That the likeness of the people who are remembering their Lord, that's you and me in here drinking the water, right? Getting the guidance. <laughs> Uplifting ourselves spiritually with the remembrance of Allah. To the likeness of the people who aren't, that is everybody else you live with here in Charleston. 
is the likeness of the living people to the dead people. And so when the water finally gets to the dead heart and it comes alive, the tears flow down the face because now life has come into you where before you were dead and didn't know it. So brothers and sisters in Islam, my last question for you all to think about is what are you going to do about it? Are you going to continue to sit in here and enjoy your Islam and drink away while the boat sinks around you? Or are you going to take the water out to the people? And that's your decision to make, not mine. Because I have no issue whatsoever with feeding the dead around me. So brothers and sisters in Islam, I don't want to just encourage you to do something good without giving you a way to do it. As you exit the building today, there is a red table outside full of Quran translations. You have them in English and Spanish. These are for you. But they're not for you to take home and read. You're Muslims. You have an Arabic Quran, and that's where your heart needs to be. But they are for your neighbors, your classmates, your coworkers, your customers, your patients, the people in your life who are, according to the Prophet, spiritually dead. Take it to them. Give it to them. It's your gift to them. You're not trying to convert them to Islam. You're not. You don't need to worry about that part. <inaudible> My job, your job, get the message to people. Allah's job, guide them and judge them for what they do with it. So brothers and sisters in Islam, my last piece of encouragement to you is the good news if you do this work. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Wallahi, la'an yahdi Allahu bi hudaka rajulan wahida, khayrul laka min humarin na'am. I swear on Allah, if a single person is guided through something you've done, this is better for you than something extremely rare and expensive that people want. So we turn to Allah and we ask for forgiveness. Allahumma inna nasaluka bi anna laka alhamd ya hanan ya badiyu samawati wal ard ya dhal jalali wal ikram ya hayyu ya qayyum. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barak ala sayyidina wa habibina muhammadin wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa dhuriyatihi wa azwajihi ajma'in. Rabbana la tuzig qulubana ba'da ith hadaytana wa hab lana min ladunka rahma innaka anta al-wahab. Rabbana gfir lana wa li ikhwanina alladhina sabakuna bil iman wa la taj'al fi qulubina ghilla alladhina amanu. Rabbana inna إنك رؤوف الرحيم اللهم اغفر المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين أو الله سبحانه وتعالى the only true God اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأذل الشرك والمشركين اللهم انصر المسلمين في كل مكان يا قوي يا عزيز أو الله we ask you to give guidance to everyone in the world and make us a part of their guidance أو الله سبحانه وتعالى we ask you to call cause love to grow in our hearts for you and your messenger until we love both of you so much that we share both of you with someone who doesn't know about you both. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to forgive us our mistakes, to cover our sins, and to allow us to enter Jannah through any of its abwab. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we ask you to be among the chosen servants who, who listened to the message of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and we ask you, O oh Allah, to cure the diseases in the hearts of the Muslims to join us together and to stop the fighting and stop the sectarianism amongst us. Oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتوب علينا يا مولانا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمة